that. He was a shark even before that, and he'd done enough amount of investments and exits from startups to understand this entire play of startups, uh, investments, exits, and helping startups to scale up, uh, probably in one of the finest manner. Uh, so welcome, Anupam. It's such a pleasure having you here with us today. And Always good to see you to be here and entrepreneur in India because at the end of the day that's what we all do and it's our purpose for week. Well, it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to always hear you and your thoughts on uh, what are the investment opportunities that exist at large in India and also about creating uh, bigger investments and bigger brands uh, coming out of India. Of course, you know, we talk about India becoming a $5 trillion economy and that's only going to happen when investments go in and at the same time, you know, when big brands get created. So one of our overarching theme here in the conference today has been that how can today brands get ready to go public? Uh, and you know, uh, when is it the right time? And of course, as an investor, you've been evaluating startups and you've helped a lot of companies to grow and become actually mid-sized companies. So do you think India in some way is ready to uh, have startups now going on the IPO? Um, as an alternative investment that they always seek when they grow? Yeah, look, I think we should, uh, before I can answer that question, you know, let's try and set some context. Abhi kali wala chala ki ya, India has already become a 4 trillion dollar company. Right? So, trillion dollar. so we are now ahead of UK. Uh, who's ahead of us? US, China, Germany, and Japan. That's it. So, with the continuing pace, I think the next year we'll be ahead of uh, one, and you know, in a couple of years we should be number three. So, the reason I said that context is because as you move up in the rankings, <clears throat> what happens is your capital markets become deeper and wider. Right? And if you go back a few years ago, uh, we were highly dependent on foreign capital keeping our capital markets buoyant. Right? But if you notice, in the last 2-3 years, whenever there's been an exit of foreign capital, particularly after the Fed and the US started raising interest rates, our markets have been buoyant. And that's because, uh, not every year, but every month, $2 billion, right? every month, literally, this record has been going on for now more than a couple of years. Two billion dollars of SIP funds, that is domestic capital, is finding its way into the stock market. Right. So that gives you an indicator. Right. So a couple of things I've said here. One is India going up in the rankings in terms of global GDP. Going far ahead in the rankings of emerging markets. Three, being more resilient because we are now dependent on local capital through SIPs and so on. Uh, so what it does is it builds a very uh, liquid uh, public market. Right? It builds a lot of liquid uh, capital markets. And that's a great environment I believe for companies to go public. And uh, so you know like you see in the last uh, you know just recently on Assam, Amart went public. They're now trading above their share or opening price. And, uh, and I think all these are great indicators uh, for the next couple of years as our economy keeps strengthening. I think you should see more and more liquidity in the market, uh, more and more debt being created. And so I think it's a good time. In fact, uh, private market which have meltdown over in the last year particularly, we are not seeing that in the public markets. A lot of companies are now choosing to go public because they're getting better valuations, at least in India, in the public markets, then they're getting in VC and PE markets, right? Uh, so I think, yeah, the tide has turned in favor of uh, public markets. And next year, uh, we could put our pause in after, um, there's still a few public, uh, a lot of, a few companies going public. But I think after the elections next year, you should see the floodgates open again. And there's a line of companies, several of, a few of mine, <laughs> we are waiting to get out of the door and uh, hopefully that will happen next year. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. So you know, uh, so one thing is of course going public. And you know, I was, I'm we have Mr. Nirmal there today in the morning and I said that you know, I is a little bit not stress enough about how important uh, good media is for startup founders. You know, it helps the 
present with uh, their own brand as well as their company at the same time uh, when they're growing. But you know, when you're actually going public, you need to become more silent. You also need to be more sort of uh, uh, the, the complex everyday working of the business becomes very different versus in what you have in a startup. So you think our founders in some sense are ready for this, you know, to, uh, to come at this crossroads. We're already seeing some, you know, outside we see some back home we see actually they're all sort of being caught up in the web of, uh, you know, uh, somewhere between their personal brand and their businesses uh, going at crossroads. So, how, how do you see that connection happening? And you know, how founders need to probably become more comfortable towards both sides that they're trying to manage today? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And this uh, concept uh, that you keep founder brand and company brand different is not possible. Ultimately, founders, at least in the startup world, are extremely integrated with their company and business brands, and you can't separate the two. Aaj bhi aap dekho, chalo Deepu ko to abhi nahi milti thi gariyan, Deep of Zomato, but until the stock price was below what it opened at, kuch bhi dalo aap, wahan par social media pe log matlab. इतनी पर्सनल गालियां देते हैं सिंट्रोलिक इट्स इट्स रियली रियली मीन आज भी विजय ऑफ बीटीएम ऑन सोशल मीडिया ही इट्स ट्रोल्ड ऑल द टाइम बिकॉज़ इट्स टॉप प्राइस इज़ स्टिल ब्रो द आईपीओ प्राइस सो इफ यू थिंक दैट यू समाम आर गोइंग टू गेट आउट देयर एंड मैनेज योर ब्रांड डिफरेंटली विद ये सब नहीं होता है यार ये पुरानी बातें हैं when communication was one sided when there was no social media you could communicate to the world what you wanted using broadcast medium and all that made sense today you put yourself out there hoping that you will represent certain value but very soon that conversation is out of your hands right today brand means what what are people saying about you not what you are saying about yourself that is what a brand is so, I think it's a double-edged sword. In my personal view, unless and until you as a founder have a clear purpose on why you want to build a personal brand, you shouldn't venture out into that zone. It's very dangerous, you know, um, to use uh, an analogy. It's like shark-infested waters, right? You're going for a nice swim, thinking you're going to have a fun frolic in time. And pretty soon there are sharks circling you. Because, you know, as they say, the US are there, rest you, whatever you say can and will be held against you. So, social media is low better. Right? 90% of the people on social media are not adding any original content. They are simply ripping apart everybody else who is putting content. So, they are waiting for this opportunity. So, as I said, you know, the benefits are what? As a public company especially, you get mentioned a lot in PR. Okay. Your brand profile goes higher. Hiring, which is usually a big problem, becomes a little easier. You know, uh, particularly if you have a founder branding, you can attract more people because people respond more to human beings and they generally respond to companies and brands, right? So I think all that has been invited to more parties, right? So yes, a benefit say, but on the other hand, a slight wrong step and people will rip you apart. One quarter of them is here, customer company. People think as a founder, you are the chief customer support officer. I'm not kidding. Today, even in India, this is very interesting. Even today, if a Tata Motors CEO goes to a party, good high-end party also, I guarantee you that the people will say, sir, that you जैगवार खराब हो गए दो बार सर्विस में भेजा ठीक नहीं हो ये बहुत कम है इट्स वेरी कम सो सो आई थिंक इट्स अ डबल एज सो यू हैव टू बी वेरी क्लियर एंड केयरफुल इट इज नॉट यू नो एन ए प्रायोरिटी इवेंट दैट इट इज प्री ऑर्डेड दैट इफ टू बिल्ड अ ग्रेट सक्सेसफुल कंपनी यू मस्ट हैव अ स्ट्रांग फाउंडर ब्रांड इन फैक्ट इफ यू लुक एट द नंबर्स the best performing companies on the stock markets for a long period of time do not have strong founder brands. 
Many times you don't even know the name of the song. You can look at that even in India. Does Mukesh Ambani? Yes, he has a great founder brand because he's the richest, one of the richest men in the world. But does he have a social media game? Not really. He doesn't do anything on social media. So there are a lot of people like that, right? The, so, so I don't think these are necessary. Uh, if you get attracted by the glamour alone, then you took a Shields example. I mean, he's being hauled over the coals. If he had not spent all that time on social media and instead spent time addressing this problem, it might have been behind him. So, मतलब करना है तो सोच समझ के करो भाई वहाँ पर मतलब एक बार वहाँ उतर गए तो कुछ भी हो सकता है। तो सर यू नो वंस अ कंपनी और अ स्टार्टअप डिसाइड्स टू गो इनटू एन आईपीओ और यू नो हाउ आईपीओ कंपनीज आर द आप तो दिल्ली की नहीं होती इसमें तो दिल्ली की दिल्ली की है कुछ एंड
first born as mine, then you have to go public. Uh, so, so I think that's a very important fact. If you don't have those pressures, then in India, I think profitability is very important to go public. Because now there is a lot of growth. As Zomato has started delivering returns, uh, maybe hopefully Nike, as Paytm delivers returns, I think people here will get used to uh, betting on companies where winner takes all, but the gestation period is very long. They can historically have any more, right? Because we've not had digital companies that are unprofitable in public. <clears throat> but for now, I think if you're a startup that doesn't have all these pressures, it is better to have profitability and some level of predictability before you go public. Having said that, my personal view is that markets like consistent and believable stories. So if you can tell the market the truth, that look, like Amazon, let's take Amazon's example, it was in the West, but even when Amazon went public, there was no history in the West of companies staying unprofitable for so long. But Jeff Bezos was very clear that we will optimize for the long term, not the short term. If we have to take a hit on our quarterly earnings, we'd rather do that, but in the long term we will gain market share. And he maintained that quarter after quarter, year after year, yes, in the interim, People might say, Kya, what's he smoking, what's the company that are profitability? And they will punish you. But in the long term, if you stay true to your story and you deliver on that, you will be rewarded disproportionately. And that's what we've seen with the Amazon. So, that's it. So, if you want to do this, continues to deliver on this promise, which he has been doing now for a couple of quarters, of showing consistent profit. Now, he said that Blinkit will deliver profitability. Other, uh, he continues that, then I think the confidence goes up significantly. I think market will stop caring less about immediate quarter profits and more about the story he's telling you for the next year or two years, right? And they will reward this portion. Already, you have seen that 12-13 million dollars, the valuation will be as you went to go. At one point, in the last two years, you could have bought it at 4-5 million dollars valuation. Right. So, so I think, uh, I think these are some of the things to do. No, I think you made a brilliant point, but and again you're right that you know if those quarter to quarter earnings don't match up, then people tend to sort of uh, put you down on those things. Um, so you know, do you think something culturally needs to therefore change in startup uh, ecosystem? You know, as an investor, would you want to press your startup to start thinking profits early? If you have to go, let's say, it, as you said, next day you want to see some of your startups hitting the IPO market. So you know what is to follow. We've already seen enough examples of startups getting um, fired on the line for not being able or not uh, putting profits out there. So do you think VCs um, somewhere would need to probably start building their startups to think, um, you know, packed um, much earlier than uh, they used to? I think that uh, in an ideal world, right, everything that you sell from day one would generate enough profit to cover up your expenses and you would take home money. Right? But unfortunately, the reality is we have some dirty word called, called competition. Uh, so, competition ensures that things are not that easy for you. So, if you are in a market where the long term winner takes all. So, so, there are two types. First of all, let's go step back. There are two types of unprofit. There, there's two types of losses, right? One loss is that for every bottle I sell, I lose money. Right? And that happens before you find product market fit. Again, you are very early stage and you have just raised seed capital, you have to raise care to find product market fit. So, you are not clear that you will be able to make so much money in one minute. You are still figuring that out. So, at that point, you might be losing money on every bottle. Right? And that is 
that's the worst kind of loss. Because you've not yet found product market fit. How can you scale? Leave alone go public. The second type of loss is that you are profitable every time you sell it. But you have your corporate costs and other overheads and fixed expenses to cover. That is a more acceptable form of loss. Because beyond a certain scale, obviously a lot of that money will flow down to the bottom line. So I think, uh, and rightly so, a lot of VCs do this already. They understand this better than uh, many of us. They are ensuring that their companies, in the last two years, you've seen how many companies have cut their workforce. That is essentially to bring down fixed cost. And a lot of companies that you have heard about, they say that we are removing the poor performance, they are basically just cutting cost. Some people say that they are not saying that they are not saying that. That is essentially to cut down fixed cost. So I think that is more acceptable, more predictable that your profit will be reduced. And for them, I think the VCs are pushing really hard to get profitable very, very quickly. Within this year, you've seen several companies that were using millions a month have moved to you know CM pool level profitability and even EBITDA level profitability. Next year, there are many other companies launch. But the companies, and there are many of those out of these hundred unicorns that we have, there's a large percentage that still don't have product market fit. Generally, was seed stage pe hona chahiye. But this has happened to these companies because of free and cheap capital and because they were all drinking their own, you know, Kool-Aid or whatever you want to call it, Premal Pei, Nasha Ho Gaya Tha. You start fooling yourself, you know, product market fit ho gaya hai, aage ja ke paisa bana rahe ge. They can have to unit economics in a better way. So VCs are also thinking about the greater full theory, software and tiger was to chuka rahe ge. So, now it's not that. So, now you are left holding a lot of bottles of water or whatever you want to call it, which you cannot recover your cost. So, I think many of these unicorns or so-called unicorns will disappear. But the others that remain will more than make up in terms of value creation over a long period of time. So, you know, you also said the word competition. So the new Shark Tank season is just now yeah. <laughs> So is it going to be more competitive than the earlier seasons? Now we have new sharks also, so there is competition there too. <laughs> so how is it going to look different in terms of uh, the kind of companies that are pitching and kind of um, investors, the way they are sort of going after the best companies? If you can just give us like a brief preview. Yeah, I think the sharks, I don't know. हमें कुछ कमी लगी होगी इसके इतने शार्क्स क्या हैं? I don't know. कुछ तो बात है. But नहीं, I think you know they are trying different things. See, I'll give you an example. Tell you something. In the US, a shark tank जहाँ पर इतना बड़ा हिट हो गया, अभी 15th year चल रहा है उनका 14th या 15th year, right? And in the third year, they are almost closed down because they were not getting any viewers. And it was not a successful show. India may it just took off to be timing it to be safe. And people were tired of all this asshole stuff, they wanted something fresh. So it comes to take off again. But I think maybe reality showed them and it takes three, four years to figure out its right model for the right audience and then have a consistent sort of you know audience, audience program fit if you want. So I think that experimentation is going on right now. <clears throat> uh, so I think you know these sharks, you must have seen many of you build sharks, it's just marketing. It's fundamentally mostly the same sharks. We have a few guest sharks that come for you know a few episodes, one episode or two episodes. So that doesn't really change the complexion that much of the show. It continues to remain the same. I mean, competition to hope I just, you know, you know, five, six type of personality to a company to put on it with a team, and they competition to do it for deals. So drama, fights, these 
सब तो मतलब नेचुरल आउटकम है राइट आई थिंक दैट इज गोइंग टू हैपन आई थिंक द वन थिंग दैट्स दिस ईयर इज डिफरेंट दैट आई हैव सीन एंड शूट इज ऑलमोस्ट 60% ओवर इज द कंपनीज दैट आर कमिंग इन द स्टार्टअप्स दैट आर कमिंग इन अ वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर्ड एंड द शार्क्स हु आर पुटिंग इन द मनी आर ओनली डूइंग इट इन द बिलीव इन द कंपनी सो द लेवल ऑफ ऑथेंटिसिटी जो है वो बहुत हाई है so it is a business and a education and entertainment show uh and the drama is at the second wo oh, hoga right that is hum 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 khana bhi khate hain to india mein panch kadori leke do sabziyan ek dal ek raita thoda sa tab ja ke khane mein maza aata hai to uske west jaisa nahi hai ki ek chicken grill chicken le liya aur usko kha तो तड़का तो तभी आएगा सो आई थिंक दैट यू विल सी ऑफ कोर्स पर आई थिंक यू विल सी अ मच मोर ऑथेंटिक शो सनराइज सर आपने उल्टा कहा कि आपने कभी आपने बहुत ज्यादा लाइफ राइट थी सो यू नो दे आर द शार्क्स आल्सो डिसाइडेड टू शेयर इट विद यू सॉरी यू सर आई एम खुद की बड़ाई खुद के मुंह से क्या करूं अच्छा आप ही ने बोल दी
And I promise you, I swear you will not be here, but we did not speak anything about this. This just happened to happen. You asked me this question. And this happened. So I, I don't know how, but what that? I check out the book of Mandi Akhi. I check the last thing about that. Tomorrow you have a set of match. It's generally to be done. But tell me how many episodes uh, were there in Shark Tank season two? Approximately, tell me. Many. अच्छा जवाब. इसका जवाब इन डिबेट्स नहीं है मेरे भाई. इसका अंबर. Close enough. Very good, you get it, man. Fifty that was shy. I think in fifty one was special episode. Is that fifty one? So we get that's not allowed. I don't know how many guys we have. One out of them is yours. It's two sizes, so we want. How many how many episodes this year of season three, guys? Anyone? Huh? Please let me guess. Yeah, how many points are we missing? Huh? नहीं आपका 45 इस क्लोज़ है ना फिर से 50 ट्रिक क्वेश्चन है आपने बता रहा ना 45 सो इसके लिए मैं क्या अगर साइज नहीं आएगा तो बड़ी ही है और क्या कुछ है हाउ मी हाउ मी शार्क्स इन शार्क एंड सीज़न थ्री वेल ये देखो ये क्या कुछ क्या है नहीं नहीं ये एपिसोड में बाहर है इतनी ताकत हो रही है but uh, 12 shots, that's right, you get one. And Lady uh, Jaya. And a very simple question is, uh, who is the best shark? Who is the best shark?